time for the bell How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter But first, let's get the mindset centered Hey, hey, let's go uh, We're not here to gamble, we're here to trade We follow the plan, that's how we get paid Testing, trading, have success Find what works for you and forget the rest Stats and probabilities is what we're about Time to dismiss greed and doubt Focus on the process, not the money And the profits will flow like honey Power our live, let's start the show Come on trade hackers, get ready to go Zero day options, time to make bank Get locked and loaded, then be ready to blank Hey. What's up everyone? Welcome to Power Hour Live on a Monday, September 11th Hope everyone's having a good day. Quite a tight little range today. I know I saw a couple of you got barely ticked out of your, your AM trades, um, unfortunately. Uh, I booked uh, both, hit both profit targets on the AM, hit one profit target on the DKS before getting stopped out for a profit on the second portion. Uh, I've got my quiet lunch on, which it comes down a little bit. You see my 40% profit targets at 745. It was trading down to low eights. It's at about 10 right now. So a little down move to hit my first profit target on the QL. And for Power Hour, we got some low, low premiums, my friends. How low can they go? Volatility has been contracting all day. Here's a five-minute chart of VIX. Obviously, on Monday, as we know, it pops up. Actually pushed up after the open, and then it's just been dwindling ever since, down to 1376. Buy some longs for tranche one. Got my longs locked in for tranche number one. I'll enter the shorts here in a few minutes. I mean, I haven't seen this. Uh, we have we had several periods here where this thing barely even moved between five point strikes in SPX. I mean, since. 12.35 Central, we have literally been sitting at 44.86. So let's see if, uh, let's see if old SPX can stay in a tight range for us for power hour. So we'll definitely be doing a straddle. Question is, is it going to move towards a strike to give us a little bit more of a balanced straddle? Or is it going to be a little bit lopsided as far as the price of the calls and the puts? Right now it's right in between. So choosing the 85s or the 90s. Pretty close in price. All 
All right, so got to make a choice. Looks like ever so slightly closer on the 4490s. And since Dick K gave me that bullish uh, trade idea, I'm going to air a little bit to the upside. So I'm going to go 4490s. Trotch one straddle. Trying to get filled at 620. Filled at 620. Almost right on the dot. Five till the hour. Forty four ninety straddle. Let's uh, just check up on some other positions while we've got time. Looking at the TGIF, volatility contracting, so it's down a little bit. I did enter a new 1 2 and a 1 3 B and B. Those are down a tiny bit. Off a short strangle in MES today, hit profit target. Our other one's doing just fine. Our ducks are doing just fine. Added a calendar adjustment to our time fly. Quiet lunch. Like I said, I'm trying to get out at 745 to close the first half. It's currently trading at 880. So staying right here for a little while longer or just a little down move would hit that. You guys are kind of quiet today. I mean, the, I know the market's quiet. That doesn't mean you guys have to be quiet. Everybody hear me okay? <laughs> All right, good, good. Thought I was just hanging out by myself there for a minute. By the way, if you're new here, we do have a lot of uh, downtime here between positions. So if you have questions, need us to fill in some gaps, now is a good time. 25 kilometer bike ride earlier. Nice. All 
I ran in a 5k run this weekend. My uh, youngest son wanted to, wanted to run in it. He's a, he's getting into cross country. And then my oldest ran with us too. And my oldest ended up winning the whole thing. It's 13. <laughs> I, I was leading up to it as, you know, I kept saying your little brother's going to beat you. I mean, he's been, he's been running and my oldest is, he's a sprinter. Like he's always been really fast, but he's a sprinter and he was determined not to let his little brother beat him. And so he, uh, took off out of the gate and never slowed down <laughs> Ended up running it in like 24 minutes and something. Beat his, beat his younger brother by a couple minutes. And then dad, you know, I won't, we won't discuss my time, but I finished. I ran the whole time. I ran, I ran a half marathon last November, but then it was like right after I got done with that training for that, I just stopped running altogether. So I, when my son asked me to do this 5k, I was like, Oh, I better, I better at least get out there and see if I can run a few miles still. So I ran one 5k on Wednesday. I think it was just on my own. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, running's not very fun when you don't, when you don't keep up with it. Yeah, I'm definitely not a definitely not a natural runner. All right, quiet lunch down to eight twenty. I'm looking for seven forty five. And if that hits, I would reduce my stop from eighteen down to six. For the remain in trail, the remaining remaining half of it. Yeah, we'll go. You can go half and half. I think Dick Cave put in that out one time, and um, I I did it. I've done it a couple times, but for me, it's just easier just to, especially with doing three tranches, just to. Cause then you get, then you get two positions to manage just for tranche one, but yeah, it's certainly a viable way to do it. Yeah. You know, often right. I, I hesitated to, to do that because I, you know, I don't want to promote bending the rules, but I also think you gotta, you know, for me, when I'm like, I, like I mentioned, when I'm, when I'm building my, my trade plan out, I'm just not getting that granular, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking at tenths of percents to, to decide on what those criteria is. So, you know, if it comes to a situation where it's right on the borderline, I'll, run it through the test and see what the effect is. If it would have affected it, I would have passed. But the fact that there's almost no effect to me, it just made sense to, especially on a day like today, you know, when there's zero going on, <clears throat> you know, if there had been a bunch of fed speakers this afternoon or something, I, you know, I may have passed as well, but.
as long as you can differentiate in your trade plan and your rules of, you know, doing something like that versus, oh, I'm just going to hold this a little bit longer. That's the same thing, right? That we're just kind of bending the rules. Well, to me, it's not. It's completely different. So I just, hopefully that was clear on why I thought that was okay. But if you're, but if you're somebody who's susceptible to, okay, if I bend this rule, then I'm going to bend the next one. Then, you know, then that's, that's not a, not a good thing. What do I think about exiting a position 5% away from profit target? So like on the quiet lunch here, if instead of closing half at 40%, I said, no, I'm at 35%. I'm going to go ahead and take it off. Is that, is that what you mean? Yeah, I, I don't do that. Definitely don't do that. And I know it's tempting, especially if you're just sitting here staring at the screen and it's it's getting close and you and you start doing all kinds of, you know, analysis of, oh, I think it's going to go up now. It's not and it's not going to hit it. It was so close. I could just take it now. I, I just I don't play that game. I, I set my profit targets and. They hit, they hit. Yeah, I don't I don't agree with that bending of a rule, that type of bending of rules, because you can easily go into option omega and say, okay, well, what if I took it off at 45 versus 50? It'll quantify that based on obviously it's historical trades, but you know, you'll you'll notice a you'll notice a difference. Uh, Ryan P. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't see the. Uh, I didn't have a chance to to look at those posts, so I'm not sure I can comment. Was that in the zero DTE channel? So is that in, in regards to if it's right in between strikes, taking a straddle on either side or going inverted instead of the straddle? The, the way I think about it is if it's in the middle, I would... I would do a, I would be okay doing a straddle on one strike and a straddle on the other, but I would be managing them as two separate trades because from a risk profile, theoretically, it's just like an inversion, right? It's just like going inverted. But if you're going to manage them as two separate straddles, then to me, that's a little bit different.
Cause then if price, you know, bounces around, you're, you know, potentially going to be able to reduce stop on one and then it goes back up, reduce stop on the other. You know, there's a lot of little factors that could come into play there. Depending on how you manage your, your trades. All right, a few minutes away from tranche two, and we haven't moved. I in my lungs for trunch too. Right now it looks like the forty four ninety straddle for trunch two. But I'm going to give it a few minutes. Quiet lunch is at 760, 750, and filled. So I need to move my stop from 18 to 6. Nice. Very nice. was it was a quality lunch quality quiet lunch all right so maybe 4485 for tranche 2 4485 filled at 520 on the 4485 straddle for tranche 2 
Man, I have not seen this uh this extended amount of time with this flat of a price movement in quite a while. Next profit target for the remaining of remaining piece of the quiet lunch would be two forty five. So nothing, uh, nothing on the schedule for tomorrow either, as far as economic reports go. And then, of course, Wednesday, CPI, Thursday, PPI. And then next week, we got Jerome in the house with the FOMC on Wednesday. Five minutes till tranche three. Uh, Agui, I don't know. I'm not sure I understand your question, but um, I don't. I don't trade iron condors in the morning. I have a couple of specific FOMC trades that I'll 
that I'll do that day, but not the, not the normal ones. I assume that's your question. Okay. Buy some more longs for tranche three. And we would technically get ourselves a little five point strangle here if it holds. I'll dig up my um, my FOMC trades on Option Omega here in a minute after we get into tranche three. If I remember right, after they introduced the intermittent stop losses, our the the initial one ended up not being as good as it we thought it was before before intermittent stop losses were introduced. But the uh, FOMC Rick, I think, was still really nice. Looks like it might be the 9085 strangle. Give it another little bit. Ninety eighty five strangle for two forty. Filled at two thirty five. And if you waited, it'd probably be the 4490 straddle now. And it looks like I was stopped out of the rest of my quiet lunch for a profit. <laughs> Sorry, Tevis. Didn't mean to make your heart jumped. J heart jump.
Yeah, mine started at 18, reduced down to six on a three, two. I got hit at, I got stopped out at 1150. So I can't remember, let's see. My profit target hit at 745. So my stop was then to reduce six bucks above that. So I got a little bit more trail. So yeah, anyway, stopped out at 1150. Dick K, I just got out of my long uh, MES trade. I booked $246.25 on your um, divergence idea. So I appreciate that. And by the way, that's, that number is eerily close to what it cost me to send you some barbecue. So there you go. <laughs> exactly, Ken. Made that money back before my credit card statement showed up. Oh yeah, so FOMC, so I was gonna Get my FOMC test. So here it is. Um, yeah, and this is so after the intermittent stop losses were available in, um, option Omega didn't look as good. Let me see if I got the last FOMC date in there, July 26th. I think that's the last one, right? So going back to the beginning of 2022, still 75% win rate. I mean, not, not bad. Just let me see what it looked like without intermittent stops. I, Cause it, I remember it definitely had an effect.
Oh, no. That's showing no effect. Hmm. Must have been thinking about something else. So basically the way that the way that this this trade works is we enter uh, just before the data is released at 150 p.m. Eastern. And then we take it off before take it off by 225 Eastern, right before Jerome takes the stand for the press conference. So essentially, we're getting in right before the data is released. The data is released. The market does a little dance, but we get a big contraction in implied volatility. And typically, the move happens either during or after his press conference. And so we we just kind of capture a quick, quick little decay in that time. So that's that one. And then the FOMC reverse iron condor kind of takes advantage of the, once the press conference starts. So essentially we are opening the trades at 235. So right after the press conference starts, we've already gotten the ball contraction from the initial data release. We've gotten maybe a little bit more contraction once he starts speaking. but then um, typically get some movement after that. And so going back to 2022, you can see uh, 10 for 10. Let me check the, yeah, I've got July 26th is the last one. So 10 out of 11, I guess the last one was I thought we I thought we had a nice winner on that though. The back test is showing it was a tiny loss. Oh, I think I know what I, I think last time, um, somebody, somebody took this criteria and just did a long straddle instead of these strikes. Let me see. I think it was Dan B maybe. I don't have the test, but looks like whether you do a reverse iron condor or a, oh yeah, that's what this is. No, this is reverse iron condor. Never mind. But it's just 50 delta, not our typical Rick strikes. Oh no, that's five DTE. It's a reverse calendar. What am I doing? That's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, here we go. Here's the link to the FOMC Rick. Yeah, so you're entering right after the right after the presser starts. So going back to the beginning of 2022, it's 12 out of 13, and it's showing the last one.
could have swore the last one we did was uh, was a winner though. And I'm pretty sure I just bought a straddle instead of using the, the strikes here, but could be wrong. Buy call, buy a put. I think we're looking at like a 25% profit target. Yeah, there you go. 13 for 13. Let's keep bumping this profit target up. See how high we can go based on the, the last sessions. Okay, 40%. You have two losses in there. Thirty percent. You have two. This looks like twenty-five percent was the was the number, at least for the last thirteen. So this is FOMC. Straddle, straddle. So I just, I'll post that here too. That's the FOMC long straddle test. So I'll probably be doing both of those. FOMC day and we're, and we'll be streaming live during FOMC. We'll jump on about <clears throat> 10 or 15 minutes before the data is released and we will stay on for a little while. Yeah, Ryan P. On um, did I not share that one? Yeah, a second. Yeah, before the press conference starts. You you shouldn't, in my opinion, you should not trade. Here's the. Uh, FOMC iron condor. In my opinion, I wouldn't be trading AM iron condors on FOMC day. If you've ever, if you've ever done it, what you'll notice is that even if price stays right dead centered, you may have zero theta decay, or it may even expand a little bit. So you're taking all the risk, but you're not getting any, any of the benefit of theta decay. All that premium will, will hold all the way up until the data is released. And so that's why we do it based on that link I just posted. Sometimes people will run their back tests and they will take out FOMC as a blackout day. And then they'll play with it and they'll be like, wait, this back test actually performs just as good or better, actually better with FOMC in there. But what they don't realize is that when you're actually trading it, you're sitting there and you're getting zero theta decay all day long until that number's released. So there's, in my opinion, there's no reason to take that risk until 
might as well just put it on right before the data is released, which is kind of how I came up with that idea because I, <laughs> that's from experience, my friend. Mm, 18 and a half minutes until the bell. All right, so I'm just trying to clean something up there. 
still nice and centered with 14 minutes to go. Thank you, Tevis. So I got into Tranche one at 620. So if it gets down to 372, so call it 370. I'll reduce my stop to 670. Did tranche one already get down to the stop move area when I wasn't watching? Okay. To bounce back, back up just slightly. And then tranche two got in at 520. So I need that one down to 310. That's currently trading at 350, 360. So if we push down a little bit, tranche two will get reduced. We bounce, tranche one should get reduced. So tranche two would get reduced to 510 if it gets down to 310. And we got 10 minutes, my friends, five minutes to exit. Okay, 510 for tranche two, reducing stop for tranche two. All right, now we can bounce back up a little bit. If we bounce back up and get tranche one back down to 370, we can reduce that one as well.
The race is on. Can we reduce the stop before we exit? Right above here is just the sweet spot. Just another point or two higher would be just fine. I said just a point or two higher would be just fine. Two minutes till I exit. Tranche two at uh, buck thirty five. Build it a dollar thirty five. That's on tranche three. Tranche twos at a buck forty. Tranche one. Let's just go with five twenty five. We can get a little bounce. Tranche one filled at 525. Tranche three, trying to get, it's time to exit. How about 210? How about 220? 225. All right. All three winners. How about that? Low, low premium, but still booked three winners on all three tranches. All right. Good stuff, my friends. Way to start the week. Didn't have any losers on zero DTE today. Very nice day. All right, guys and gals, we will be here tomorrow. Chad will be running the live stream for uh, tomorrow and the next day, but we'll be here for Power Hour all week. All right, guys, take care. Cheers. Have a good night.